whenever we go into schools or youth groups, I always go, all right, guys, put your hand up if you know who Muhammad Ali is. You know, you could walk down the street and ask probably nine out of 10 people, they know who Muhammad Ali, probably 10 out of 10 people actually know who Muhammad Ali is. Um, and the reason they know who he is, is because he was a phenomenal boxer. He was a character, but also the things he did outside the sport, he transcended the sport of boxing. And that's exactly what Len Johnson did. So we had our very own Muhammad Ali here in Manchester. Clayton, on the outskirts of Manchester city centre, is one of the sporting hubs of Great Britain. Home to the Premier League champions, the National Cycle Centre and the National Squash Centre. In the early 1900s, Clayton was very different, an area that was very much on the brink of poverty. But it was here that a true sporting legend was born, one who would rise to become one of the greatest boxers of his day. You may not know much about him, he may not have had the same fame as some modern sporting heroes, but for the best part of two decades, Len Johnson was a fighter that was loved by boxing fans, feared by opponents and shunned by those in power because of the colour of his skin. Well, Len was one of four children brought up in the Bradford area of Manchester where Manchester City's ground now stands. He received an elementary education and had to leave school early, as a lots of children did in those days. And his father wanted Len to go into boxing. And I think the reason probably was to, to do with learning to defend himself. Len's father pushed Len into, into a fight and he went into professional boxing this way. So Len got into boxing really through, uh, through his father. After a spell which saw Johnson struggle to truly stand out, his victories eventually began to pile up as he rose through the ranks to become one of the most feared fighters in the country, racking up victory after victory against top-level boxers. Manchester had a new hero. People packed the streets to see him off before his fights. Newspapers praised him. Locals loved him. Yet, the establishment continued to ignore him. Tough champions such as Len Harvey, Roland Todd and Ted Kid Lewis, once described by Mike Tyson as one of the greatest boxers of all time, were defeated by Johnson on his way to a record of over 90 professional wins. Len discovered that being a, a, a coloured man in Britain's white society of the time meant he couldn't go any further. He could get big matches but he couldn't get a title fight. Boxing at that time was controlled by the National Sporting Club in London. And the, the, the National Sporting Club didn't allow coloured fighters in their, in their ring at all. And Lemp was frozen out from a title fight. Going back to 1911, before Len's time, Jack Johnson, the world heavyweight boxing champion, came to Britain. And Jack Johnson was a flash character who defied all the conventions of his time. He had a white wife, one of several white wives actually. And he came to Britain doing exhibitions and the National Sporting Club didn't get on with him. They, they, they found him arrogant. And they were of the opinion to have black champions was a pretty bad idea really. And that it was they who, uh, who instituted a ban on coloured fighters fighting for titles. Yeah, so I vividly remember it. It was in the height of the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020, and I got sent this article in a WhatsApp group, and I'm not the strongest of reader, but I remember just being glued to the screen reading this article. Um, it was in the Tribune magazine, and I just remember being absolutely gobsmacked that I'd never heard of this amazing story. And I've grown up in boxing gyms since I was eight, nine years old. You know, mixed race, West African myself, massive fan of boxing. So I was like, how do I not know? about this amazing story and then I was kind of enraged and angered but then obviously also mad inspired so uh, you know it's shocking that it took me that long to, to hear about it but I'm glad that I know the story now. After a spell which saw Johnson struggle to truly stand out his victories eventually began to pile up as he rose through the ranks to become one of the most feared fighters in the country. He had a, a, a lucky break, actually, when he was matched with Roland Todd, who was the British middleweight champion of the time. And for the fight, Len decided that he needed to train properly, which he hadn't done previously. 
he, he didn't really understand training really but he this time he did train properly and he managed to defeat Roland Todd and it caused a, a sensation in the boxing world because nobody knew who Lem was whereas Roland Todd was a star and Roland Todd wanted a rematch to put the record straight and then lost again and this put Len into the big time and he later on that year he took on Ted Kid Lewis who was a uh, one of boxing superstars at the time. He'd been world welterweight champion and one of the most famous names around in boxing, really. And Len more or less effectively ended Ted Lewis's time in, the, in boxing by stopping him in the ninth round. So that was Len launched well and truly into big time boxing. Johnson's biggest fight though, remained outside of the ring, where despite being one of the nation's finest boxers, and regardless of the fact he defeated the reigning British champion, he was never allowed to officially fight for or hold the British title. He would have ranked much higher if he wasn't around at a time when things was just completely wrong, you know, because of the colour of his skin. He wasn't allowed the opportunity that he deserved, that his talent deserved, that his hard work deserved. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a crying shame. And I think it's like, it's people like him who paved the way for other fighters. The powers that be in the 19th century had this great fear of political unrest. And what they didn't want in the colonies were blacks becoming agitators. And they didn't want black role models, especially in sports, especially in boxing. And they had the idea that black role models in boxing would be a really bad thing. It would, it would lead to unrest, civil unrest. And this world worked against fighters like Len Johnson. It wasn't just in the ring that Len was a fighter. Out of boxing, he became a passionate campaigner for social justice, showing as much energy and determination to pick apart injustice as he's shown when picking apart opponents in the ring. He was a pretty fierce political opponent from all, by all accounts. I'm not sure he was, I think he tried with the Labour Party and I think then, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, felt they weren't, they weren't strong enough. And, you know, I, I, anyway, I just think somebody of deep principle, clearly. Um, somebody who um, obviously turned his own personal experiences into trying to make change uh, for others. He met a man called Jack Silverman and Silverman was a, was a Communist Party member. He invited Len to join the Communist Party because he thought it would be a way forward for the working man and for the coloured man especially. So Len took this up, joined the Communist Party and went on to become an active communist and he, he contested six times council seats, but each time he lost. With the support from some of Len's family, there's a campaign to see the pioneering fighter finally given the recognition he deserves. Yeah. It's crazy to think he was never champion, looking at the years. At first it was a little bit of a shock, because I think when I was told how well he'd done, I just sort of assumed that he'd been a champion and managed to, you know, get recognised for that. And when I was told he wasn't, I was a bit confused. And then when I understood the reasons why, that really brought it home about, you know, how unjust it was. and made me sort of question, well, what things can I do and what things can't I do and have we come as far as we need to or not? Um, and then, yeah, just that unjust part of it and I just really felt for him and I felt that, you know, sad that he didn't get a chance in his lifetime to really be recognised and celebrated in the way that he should have done. You can't keep going forward if you don't know where it's come from or the history of it, so it's a story that I think everyone should know. <laughs> there he is, <laughs> Len Johnson. Oh, it feels nice to see him. With all of those, he's not a standout, he's just someone that has done a lot for boxing history, isn't he, up there? You know, I sit here and I say all this and I know how incredible he is, but it's just my nana's dad. And to think he'd have a statue and be celebrated and now finally recognised and be somewhere that people could go and learn and see, yeah, gives me goosebumps a little bit, the thought of it. It's not just with a statue that young people can learn more about one of Manchester's greatest athletes. More and more schools and youth groups are inviting speakers to spread Len's story. We had our very own Muhammad Ali here in Manchester with a much better record than Muhammad Ali, to, to, if we're being real, 90 plus wins. It's unbelievable. 
So yeah, I always go, put your hand up if you know who Muhammad Ali is, and they all put the hand up. And then I say, okay, now put your hand up if you know who Len Johnson is, and obviously, when we deliver it for the first time, no one has a clue who he is. Um, but now that you know, we're starting to shift the balance and, and go and tell kids, you know, I'm confident if we went to a few schools, when do you know who Len Johnson is? Oh yeah, I remember. And we, I put we saw a play on him a few few months back or a few terms ago. So yeah, that's that. You know, that kind of shows the the scale of how unknown how unknown the story is really. Well, because he wasn't a champion and he hadn't fought for British or European or world titles, you, you can't find Len Johnson's name easily in boxing record books. He just isn't there. And it's a, it's a crying shame, really. It wasn't just in the boxing world that Johnson encountered prejudice, but in his day-to-day -day life too. Once, years after he's hung up his gloves, when attempting to buy a drink in the old Abbey Tap House pub, he was refused service because of his skin colour. Len went back to the pub with over 200 friends, black and white, and eventually the ban was lifted. At the actual pub that was kicked out of the old Abbey Tap House in Hume, it's like a live music venue, they do shows and stuff. And every October for the last three years, they've done a drink every October to celebrate Len. And it's like some of his family and friends go and people who know the story go and a few kind of activists go. And it's always quite a small, low key thing. And in October last year we had one and it was amazing. We had a drink and we had a party, it was great. And there was a few councillors there and stuff. And then the, the venue owner said, why don't you put on a night, you know, like to celebrate Len Johnson, you can do a thing called Breaking Bars, like as in Breaking the Colour Bar, uh, which is an amazing name. So we, we're four shows in now. Do not Breaking Bars right now. And it's very much kind of like love music, hate racism. So people can come down, enjoy the night and they learn something new. That big at the very pub that he was kicked out of and it's you know you look at the crowd it's diverse and it's multicultural and everyone's just having a great time and partying and it's kind of music's a very and art full stop is a very good way to kind of um, touch on certain topics in a very non-radical way so we can have a party and just mention by the way we're here to celebrate the life and legacy of Len Johnson. We've got support from our cultural lead, uh, is the deputy leader. You've got support from us, the uh, councillors of you, Mossai, Clayton and across the city. And we will work with all, all the team to make sure we can get that statue in Stevenson Square, preferably. Sport's a huge part of uh, Manchester culture. And I think, look at the big nights, I think any, whether it's Manchester lads or not, one of the biggest nights in the country, when a boxing show comes to town, it's at the arena, the greatest arena, for me anyway, the greatest arena in the world. I do, I think it'd be amazing to put it there. If it was 100 years later when he was around, there's a great chance he would have been headlining that arena and um, the city would have been turning out in force to support him. I just think it's a massive part of the, the, the city's story. And, you know, we don't have many statues to grand figures in, in the city. We actually uh, do, though, have a place for people who fight for, for the underdog. But Len's in that category, isn't he? He kind of fought for people here who didn't have a voice, fought the racism of the authorities at the time, kept his dignity through all of that. You know, a true Mancunian hero, but more than a hero just of these parts, I think a true uh, hero of, of, the whole, of the whole country. So yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with this, uh, with this campaign. Where, how, some of those decisions are not for me, but I will support full recognition for Len Johnson in an appropriate place in the heart of the city to recognise the fight that he took forward for so many. Have you thought about the statue? What sort of pose you'd want? I have think, you got pictures? Have you got yeah, anything in mind? I think that one is the iconic pose, isn't it? That's, you know, his stance, he's ready for it. Yeah, something along there, I'd say. The fact that this story was kept from us, it was very purposeful. You know, it's a shameful, history, it's a shameful part of British history if you like, uh, like you know the fact that he wasn't allowed to box for a British title because of his skin colour uh, and obviously he retired in the 30s, demoralised. Getting it in schools and, and putting it in people's faces is the, one of the best things we can do because when the statue is up people are going to walk down the street and go I know exactly who that is, you know kids are going to walk down the street and go oh, that's Len Johnson. Both parents had to be white in order for him to fight. Fight for a belt that was his right.
Clayton, coloured, colour bar, area, what he was, what he was up against. 135 fights, 96 wins, 37 knockouts, something big to shout about. Welterweight, middleweight, light heavy and heavyweight, he won them all. He wouldn't wait. Politics, Labour, the Communist Party too. Paul Robeson helped him make their breakthrough. Breaking the stick. Stick of pain, stopping his rightful gain. Paving the way for it not to happen again. You think you know boxing, but do you know this name? Never let it not emit from your lips again. Len Johnson! Len Johnson! Len Johnson!